Competing in endgame content is not only about finding the best weapons and armors out there. Sure, that helps, but understanding and putting a good use buffs and debuffs will make a much bigger difference than virtually anything else. You will have already heard of Divinity getting a nerf quite soon, and we're going from a 30% debuff down to a 15% debuff. But that's not the case at all, as Divinity will still be used largely in endgame content even with the nerf. You have to remember that Divinity is giving you a constant debuff on targets compared to everything else in game, and that's what makes the nerf not so bad overall. It's unique. As long as you have the ammo and keep firing onto a target, you can easily two-phase a boss if everyone else uses the appropriate weapon to do so. You also have to remember that Rock from Val and many other bosses have a small crit spot that many people will struggle with hitting at times, and I can bet you in the near future we'll be getting many bosses like this with similar crit spot designs. The nerf isn't that bad, and outside of its use in the end game, it shouldn't make a whole lot of difference besides it. You can stack it with things like Tether, for example, and regain that similar feel, but it's not all that needed. But I know many of you here will probably put down Divinity, either because you want something different to use now and explore the options available, or you're going to be experiencing a number of players who don't understand the nerf being as bad as you think. Yes, I'm looking at you LFG players. So here's a quick reminder of some items that can give you a debuff on targets across the board. Firstly, the big hitters. Hunter's Tether offers users a 30% debuff to those affected by it and is one of the most common methods of debuffing bosses for content in game. Thanks to Void 3.0, Hunters have a multitude of ways of building into this super to offer more damage on impact, while still playing within the realm of others. Because of how simple and easy it is to use, you can create a build based just on the super alone and use it to spam the ability non-stop. For those who don't have Divinity, have nothing to worry about, as if you have just one player on team using this, you should all be good from there. We next have Trap the Cannon, which is another great exotic that I see many speedrunners use for brute forcing their way through bosses to many bosses alike. The exotic offers a 30% damage reduction as well in PvE for 10 seconds, and you will need to be close to activate its effect. On one hand, most of the bosses you face will be close quarters anyways, and can be used non-stop. On the other hand, ranged bosses will have the advantage, so you will lose out on damage if you can't find a way to damage them elsewise. This has been in game since day 1 and is still one of the most recommended exotics to use if you ever want to destroy bosses in minutes. Next we have Felwinter's Lie, which is a bit of an odd one as it can apply a 30% debuff as well, as well as blind those affected by it for 5 to 20 seconds. Now the range on it can be very wide depending on the combatant type you face, and getting a 20 second debuff on this degree is huge in the long run. Issues here though is that it's not viable against bosses unless other combatants are nearby to activate it. So it's great for ally clearing and such, and can be deadly on bosses, but only if they are in the same area as you. Now for the debuffs that will be on par with the div nerf. The Hunter's Snare Bomb, Stylus Executioner and Trapper's Ambush all offer a 15% debuff onto the targets they are affected by. They are simple to use and mostly require a mini hit to activate them. But 9 times out of 10, you won't be using them for damage so much, but rather to use them for going invis on demand. They are situational at best and not designed for boss beatdowns, but rather small foes you face. With the right build, you can spam them as much as you like, but at the same time, ranged enemies will have the upper hand in the fight if used against them. Next, we have the Child of the Old Gods, which offers a 15% debuff as well, but unlike the rest of the void abilities, I can see this being used quite a lot with the right setup. It lasts for 13 seconds, debuffs, blinds, and drain combat's health all in one, and if you get a kill with it, it will all go back to refunding you with another one. The right build for something like this can make it night and day for spamming as long as you have the right gear to back it up. We then have a community favourite, the Echo of Undermining Void Fragment. If you have a high grenade stat and can fix the negative effect, this will become a fan favourite for debuffing everything within a few seconds. It only lasts for 5 seconds, but with the correct DPS check, 5 seconds is all you will need to make a difference. And there we go, a small but very insightful video as to why the Divinity Nerf isn't as bad as you think. Many of you won't see an issue for this, but some will, so hopefully this guide will help you understand it a bit better. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more Destiny banter. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.